Gentlemen, what is going on today? My name is Ryan Mickler. I'm your host. I'm also the founder of the Order of Men podcast and movement, which if you're new to what we're doing here has been going for seven years strong now, and we're just starting to pick up speed. I feel like we're catching our strides and uh, we're finally starting to reach the amount of men that we need to, but we have a lot more work to do. So if you've ever got any value from this podcast, from the show, from the movement, from the things that we're doing, please do a couple of things. Number one, share this episode. Very easy to take a screenshot of YouTube, excuse me, or a screenshot of your phone listening to this and post it up on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, wherever you're doing the social media thing. Leave a rating and review. That goes a long way. I don't ask you guys to do a lot here, but again, the screenshots, the ratings and reviews, send a text to somebody. If somebody needs to hear the message I'm going to share with you today, then just blast that out. This is a grassroots movement. I don't pour a lot into advertising. Um, I don't spend a bunch of money on trying to get in in front of everybody. We're doing this as a grassroots movement and it's really growing. And that's a testament to the work you're doing and also your ability and desire to share. Um, I apologize about trying to adjust here, working through uh, the recovery of a pectoral tendon repair. (laughs) So um, you might see me adjust my, my sling periodically. That's what I'm dealing with. Guys, today I wanna talk about reinventing yourself It's so crucial because for a lot of men, they see themselves as one way, and yet the way that they're showing up in life is not in alignment with the way that they ideally view themselves. And when I talk with guys in this situation, it seems to me that a lot of them believe they're doomed or at a minimum destined to walk in, for example, their father's footsteps uh, or to live out the consequences of their actions up to this point. And I want to suggest to you that if you are a man who is not satisfied with who you are, with how you show up, with the results that you've produced in your life, then you do have a tremendous opportunity every single minute of every single hour to reinvent yourself, to make yourself into something more. And you're not destined to be your father. You're not destined to be the same loser that you may have always been over the past two, three, four decades, that you actually can do something about it and that you can change the way that you show up. There's a great little scene in one of my favorite movies, which is A Knight's Tale, where a young uh, boy, I can't remember his name right offhand, um, that might be the medication speaking from from my surgery, which I am still taking some of that uh, and trying to get the effects of the anesthesia to, to, to wear off. Regardless, there's a scene where a young boy who was born into poverty turns to his father's as he's looking at the nights that he wants to be. And he says, can a boy change his stars? And he's mocked and he's poked at and he's ridiculed by uh, a, a man who's in you know shackles saying that you can't change who you are. And his father says, absolutely, you can. You can change your stars. And guys, I'm here to tell you that you can change the trajectory of your life. It's not the destiny of your life because your destiny is just what you do. It's the manifestation, the realization of the behaviors, the actions, the thoughts that, that you have and, and that you perform throughout life. And if you string enough wins together, you're going to win. If you string enough losses together, you're going to lose. That's the, that's the deal. There's nothing more to it than that. But you can change your stars and you can become something different. But it's on you to reinvent yourself. Nobody else is going to step up. Nobody else is going to force you to do it. Um, you might have a wife or a boss or a family member or somebody close to you who wants to push you, who wants to motivate you and inspire you to be something different. But ultimately, you have to make that choice for yourself. But it comes with the realization that knowing that you aren't destined to be a loser and you're not destined to be a winner either. You're not destined for anything. It's just the actions and the consequences of the choices that we make on a daily basis. So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to break down five key strategies in reinventing yourself and talk a little bit about this hero's journey. Because if you look at anybody who's been successful, whether it's guys that I've had on the podcast like Terry Crews or Ben Shapiro, uh, or Tim Tebow, or Jocko Willink, or Andy Frasilla, or uh, Dave Ramsey, 
any Matthew McConaughey, any number of the guys that I've had on this podcast, all of them have reinvented themselves and made themselves into something more. Sometimes we're afraid of doing that. We're afraid of the work that goes into that, but we're also afraid of the judgment of other people. Ryan, who are you to be a podcaster? I knew you when you were a screw up. I knew you when you were drunk, when you were messing up, when you were partying, when you were doing all these things and making mistakes. Who are you to tell me what it means to be a man? We're so afraid of that, that we don't give ourselves permission to evolve and to grow. I mean, how many times we talked about this on the Wednesday podcast, do you hear from people who will say, well, you're saying this now, but a year ago you said something else, right? I've evolved. I've changed. I've, I, I think differently about things. I see things from a different perspective. I haven't always seen them from. Isn't that the point of life? You should be constantly reinventing yourself. But if you're worried about the work, that's one thing. We'll talk about that in a minute. But if you're worried about what other people are thinking of you or how they might judge you or how they might respond when you're trying to improve your life, get that out of your mind right now. Because those people would love nothing more than for you to be trapped where you currently are because your improvement represents a direct threat to the way they live their lives. See, they want you to be the same. Your wife actually wants you to be the same. Right? She'll tell you, hey, I'd like you to do better. But she really wants you to be the same because that's not threatening. She knows what it is. There's uncertainty. There's fear and there's doubt in the unknown in you changing. Your boss doesn't want you to change. Yeah, he'll say, I want you to improve. But at the end of the day, that might actually change the dynamic. A lot of people have a vested interest in keeping you exactly where you are. And you better be aware of that. And when it comes to your wife and your boss and your kids and the people who are closest to you, yeah, I believe they want what's best for you. But I also believe there's a self-preservation to it. And it's your job to change, but also show to the people who are closest to you, that your change is going to positively benefit them. But just remember, you've got to put in the work, you've got to put in the effort, and you have to get over the acceptance of others because a lot of people aren't going to accept that you're on the path to reinvent yourself to be better than you currently are. So let's break this down. Guys, number one is we can start to use some projection methods. And the first two points I'm going to share with you are projection methods. Number one is Try to become the man that you needed 20 years ago, 30 years ago, as a young boy. Maybe you were 10 years old and there was a man, a father figure, an uncle, a grandpa, a brother, a mentor, a coach, somebody that you needed in life that really could have given you some information, some guidance, some direction, some fatherly advice that would have saved you a lot of pain and frustration and heartache. Become that man. A lot of us didn't have that. I grew up without a permanent father figure. I talk with hundreds and thousands of men who have been in the same boat that I was, no father figure in their life, for better or worse, a man just wasn't present. And it created all sorts of confidence issues for me. It created confidence issues for other men. It put them on a path, a trajectory that wasn't good. And you have the opportunity to become the man that you needed. I needed somebody. I needed a father to be in my life and to be present and to speak into my heart and my soul and my mind and coach me and mentor me and give me a slap on the wrist when I needed it and kick me in the pants when I needed that. That's what I needed. But I didn't have that up until I was about 13 or 14 years old when I had men like Matt Labrum and other coaches come into my life who began to speak into my life in that way. But leading up to that point, I didn't have that. And so guys, we can look at the pain and the misery and the suffering that we've had in the past, and all of us have had it to varying degrees. And we can decide today that because I went through that situation, I don't want other people to go through that situation. I don't want my kids to deal with that. I don't want my friends to deal with that. I don't want my, my peers and the men I'm trying to serve here with order of men to go through any of that. And so I'm going to project, I'm going to look back and I'm going to decide that this is the ideal man. This is the kind of guy that I needed in my life when I was 10 years old. This is the kind of guy that I needed in my life when I went through my separation and nobody was there to help me work through that. You can be that guy. So use your pain, use your suffering, use your hardship, not to wallow in your own self-pity and throw yourself a pity party, but to become something more, to emerge 
It's kind of like the phoenix rising from the ashes. Everything may have been burned around, around you, and you have the opportunity to rise from those ashes and reinvent yourself into the person that you needed to be and into the person that you needed others to be for you. That's an inc incredible, incredible strategy that just isn't afforded to other animals of the animal kingdom. This is one of the things that makes us uniquely human. The fact that we're aware, the fact that we're conscious, the fact that we can project ourselves into the future and say, that's what I would have needed. I would have needed somebody who was bold. I would have needed a great example. I would have needed somebody who was strong. I would have needed somebody who was willing and able and courageous enough to say to me what needed to be said. And if I would have needed that, then I'm going to become that man today for myself and for the people who need it from me now. That's number one. Number two, very similarly, is be the kind of man that others need you to be. So if you look at the people who are closest to you in your life, your wife, your kids, your colleagues, your coworkers, your friends, your neighbors, your family members, there's something they need from you. Isn't our job to serve? We talk about it. Protect, provide, preside. Preside is synonymous with leadership and leadership is at its foundation service to other people that you care about. So much so that you're willing to sacrifice and commit and serve those people. What do they need from you? And as you're thinking about the kind of man you needed when you were 10, and you're thinking about the kind of man that people in your life need you to be, you need to get out your notepad and you need to start documenting these things. Courageous, bold, assertive, confident, financially successful, physically in shape, ability to communicate. I don't know what that looks like for you, but start writing out these virtues, start writing out these characteristics write out the way that this guy shows up, how he deals with challenges, how he deals with problems. Get a journal, get a notepad, write this stuff down. History and also data and research suggests that the more that you're willing to write these types of things down, the more it's likely that it manifests itself. Uh, I was reading something on uh, Gronkowski the other day, and he said that he had an assignment that when he was younger in school, he had to write down what he wanted to be. And he said that he wanted to be a football player and he wanted to play for the Buccaneers. He had wrote that and he had forgot about that until this last couple of weeks where he's retired and he started replaying these things in his mind. And it came to his mind that he had said that when he was a young boy, that he wanted to be a football player. He wrote it down in an essay or an assignment that he wanted to play on the Buccaneers. And lo and behold, that's what happened. There's something very powerful in documenting what you want, putting pen to paper and start making it a realization, getting it out of your brain and start putting it into the real and tangible world. So document this. What do you need? Who do you want to be? What did you need when you were younger? What do other people need from you? Bold, assertive, courageous, educated, wise, intelligent, financially successful, physically fit, skilled, talented. What? What is that? Write it all down, and you can start to model the type of ideal man that you want to become. So those are the first two points. Again, to reiterate, you're going to do some projection here. You're going to project back in, into the past and ask yourself, what kind of man would I have needed when I was a young boy or a young man struggling on the path? And then you're going to project forward and ask yourself, what kind of man do I need to become in order to serve the people who are closest in my life? All right. Number three, now that you've documented and you've written out and you have to write this out, I don't want you just to listen to this podcast and feel good and warm and fuzzy for the next 10, 20, 30 minutes, and then go about your normal life, dicking around and not really trying to be successful and just on the same trajectory and path that you're currently on. I want you to have a different life. So please write this stuff down. Number three is now that you know what this man looks like, this ideal man that you want to reinvent yourself into, that you want to become, that you know you're not destined to be the current man, but this new man, start looking around in your life for the guys who are doing exactly what it is you want to be doing. If it's me, and that sounds really weird, but I've talked with you enough of you who have said, hey, I want to do what you're doing, and I've got to honor and respect that. It's very strange because I realize my own flaws and inadequacies but if it's me, 
then sign up for newsletters, sign up for emails, go to our courses, sign up for the Iron Council, uh, go to our events, like put yourself in the environment of the people you want to be around and be like, if it's Jocko, if it's Tim Tebow, if it's Tim Kennedy, if it's Terry Crews, if it's Matthew McConaughey, if it's Ben Shapiro, if it's Andy Frasilla, if it's Sean Whalen, I don't know who it is for you, but every one of those individuals has opportunities where you can put yourself in proximity to those men and you can start to emulate their behaviors. If you look at Jocko and you're like, man, I want to be disciplined like Jocko, then emulate his behaviors. What does the guy do? He gets up early. He works out. He lifts heavy weights. He's disciplined. When he's on the road, he's still working out. He's sharing insights. He's being straightforward and deliberate and intentional. You could look at a guy like Jordan Peterson. You want to be like him? You've got to be well-versed. You've got to be well-researched. You have to learn how to communicate. You have to expand your vocabulary. You have to be willing to get on stage. You also have to be willing to not be liked by millions of people. Start to emulate these guys. And how do you do that? You buy their courses. You sign in for their emails. You listen to their podcasts. You go to their events. You attend their conferences. These things are in abundance. And I'm not going to say that you're just going to pick all this stuff up by osmosis just by being around them. Although I think you might actually pick up some of it by being around them because we are just a product of our environment. So you're in, if you change your environment, your, your natural results will change, but be more deliberate and intentional about that. And by the way, if you're curious, I will do a little self uh, promotion here. We've got our iron council, which is open right now. And it's, this is the last day it's open. And we've got 1200 men inside the iron council who aren't perfect. We're, we're all struggling and we're all succeeding to varying degrees and in different facets of our life. But you want to be around great and solid men who are trying to get better, who are trying to improve, who are using tools and procedures and systems and processes that have worked for thousands of men over seven years, then the Iron Council is a pretty damn good place to do it. Orderman.com slash Iron Council. But if it's not the Iron Council, maybe it's Andy and Ed Milet's Arate. Maybe it's Sean Whalen's Lions Not Sheep. Maybe it's Jocko's EF Online. Maybe it's Jordan Peterson's personality test. The stuff is there. It's all out there. And so if you're not going to use it, that's not on anybody else. That's on you. But begin to look at what you wanted from a man, what other people need from you as a man, who you want to emulate, get yourself in their circles, in their spaces, and start to emulate their behaviors. Now, the fourth point, and this is very much on the same line, is now you have to do what blank does. So for example, if you're listening to a guy like Cameron Haynes or Rich Roll, and, and you're seeing these guys who are incredible, David Goggins, incredible, incredible endurance athletes, what we have a natural tendency of doing as men is saying, well, you know, I'm not a runner. Right, you're not a runner because you don't run. Or I've heard from so many people, a good friend of mine, I had a conversation. Well, I want to write a book, but I'm not a writer. Well, you're not a writer if you don't write. You're not a runner if you don't run. But what do runners do? They run. What do writers do? They write. What do presenters and public speakers do? They present. They speak in public. Okay, so point number four is you have to do what blank does. <coughs> Excuse me. So don't come to me and say, I'm not a runner. Just go start running. I had this problem when I started writing my first book called Sovereignty, The Battle for the Hearts and Minds of Men. I told myself and other people, I'd love to write a book. I'd love to get this information out into the world. I think it would be good for people. It's a new medium that will reach people in a way that I haven't done before. And it will be a challenge for me, but I'm not a writer. Okay, well, what does that do? It shuts down progression. It shuts down growth. That's it. I'm not a writer, period. End of story, end of discussion. No, it's not the end of the discussion. You're a grown ass man. You're a human being. It's like that old adage that I hate, which is you can't teach an old dog new tricks. That isn't true. You're not a dog. You're not old. And you're capable of learning something new, of evolving and reinventing yourself into something more. What does it take? Doing the thing that you're afraid of. Ryan, I really want to speak in public, but I'm afraid of speaking in public. Well, of course you are. You've never done it. So what can you do? Well, maybe you can speak to your family as a start. Maybe the next thing you can do is you can go speak to 
Rotary or Lions Club or Chamber of Commerce or Business Network International, and you have 20 to 40 people. The next thing you can do is ask yourself to go speak at a conference. One of the very first things I did when I started Order of Man is I reached out to uh, Antonio Centeno and Aaron Marino, who are hosting an event called Menfluential. I think it was called StyleCon at the time. And I said, hey, can I speak? And Aaron Marino said, excuse me, no, it was Antonio who said, no, I don't know who you are, but why don't you come and introduce yourself? Now, I had no right to speak at their event, and yet I put myself out there because I knew that that's what was required for me to get this information out into the world. I went that first year. I didn't speak. The second year, I spoke because I went and I attended and I put myself out there and I offered my services and I wasn't perfect and I'm still not perfect. I'm improving. I'm getting better at public speaking, but it's important to me. And so speakers speak, writers write. Runners run, hunters hunt. You get it. You understand, right? You're not destined to or not to be something. If you want to be something, do the activity. That's number four. And the uh, last point that I want to share with you guys, I'm having a hard time deciphering my, uh, my scribble here on my notepad, is to critique yourself. Critique yourself every day. Look at yourself. Look at where you're falling short. Look where you're doing well. Look where you can improve. If you go run and you want to run a mile or two miles, track your time. Like track it. Okay, that that mile took me nine minutes. Okay, well, that's not going to cut it. I want to get down to eight minutes, seven minutes, six minute miles. Okay, well, you got to start tracking it and then you have to critique yourself. So you look at it, you think, okay, well, I ran that nine miles. But you know, I didn't go 100%. I think I could go another little 10 or 15 or 20% harder. And so you do that the next day. And you realize that nine minutes wasn't your best. Eight minutes is currently your best because you're willing to critique yourself or you start writing a chapter of a book. Well, Ryan, you know, I just don't have an outline. I don't know what I want to talk about. I didn't say you needed that. I said, writers write. And I didn't say every word that you write, you're going to use or put out into the world. I said, writers write. So you're going to write a thousand words today and you're going to look back at your journal tomorrow and you're going to look at it with a fresh set of eyes. You're going to say, that sucked. Or that first paragraph was really good. Or that story, that anecdote that I shared, that was powerful. But that end, that was weak. And you have to look at it with uh, an objective eye, not to beat yourself up, but so that you can improve. Critique yourself. This is something that I have incorporated into every single day of my life. When I started, I would do it at the end of the day. Now I do it after every engagement, encounter, project, task, conversation, performance. I critique myself. So when I'm done with this podcast and I hit stop and I publish this and send this to my editor, I'm going to look back and say, okay, well, how did that go? I actually listen to my own podcast. Sometimes my wife makes fun of me and other people do because they think I'm just listening to myself. And I am, I like the way that I talk. I'm, I'm proud of it because I put a lot of hours into it, but also I'm listening with a critical ear again, not to beat myself up, but to say, Oh man, I had this interview with Darren or I had this interview with Ray. I had this interview with Tim and uh, you know, I asked that great question and that was really good, but I didn't follow up with this next question that I should have asked. And so I'm going to write that down and I write it down. And then the next time I'm presented with that opportunity, I ask a better question. Some of you guys ask me, Ryan, how did you get so good at podcasting? Oh man, I'd be a great podcaster too if I was a natural like you. It isn't natural. It's not natural. Okay, I've got four kids. My youngest is six years old. As I watched all of them learn to eat and poo in the toilet and walk and run and communicate, none of that stuff came naturally. None of it. They needed to refine it, to hone it, to learn it. And still, when my six-year-old talks, sometimes he says something like, I don't know what you're saying, because that's not how you say it. He's not pronouncing it correctly. He's learning. He's getting better. (coughs) Excuse me. And that's what's required. You have to critique yourself. So there's a couple of practices I shared with you that you should be doing every day. One of them is to be emulating what other people you admire and respect are doing, and then do what they do. Again, you want to be a runner? Go run every day. Go run. You want to write? Write every day. You want to podcast? Podcast. You want to take pictures? Take lots of pictures. You want to speak in public? Learn to speak in public. 
Actually don't even, yes, learn, but actually go speak in public. So that's one practice you should do every day. Do what you want to do. Okay. Number two is critique. Get your, your notebook out and have a notebook for your review. I call it an after action review. So every evening I'll sit down. I've got notebooks up here on my bookshelf. I've got notebook right here. I've got a couple over there and I write it. I write the date. Here's the date. Here's what went well. Here's what didn't go well. Here's what I got done. Here's what I didn't get done. Here's what I want to do tomorrow. Here's how I want to be a better father. Here's how I want to be a better podcaster. Here's how I want to be a better hunter. Here's how I want to be a better, whatever my thing is. And I document it all because again, research shows that if you document it like Gronkowski did, that it's more likely to come true, to come to fruition. You're taking it out of the intangible, this, this mind type space, and you're making it tangible by putting pen to paper. I've got notepads everywhere. Notepads here, here. I've got some scribbles here. I even got some on the floor that blew down. I've got them everywhere because I'm always taking notes. And this is one of my secrets to success. Guys, you have a tremendous, tremendous opportunity to reinvent yourself every single day. You are not destined to be your dad. You're not destined to be the loser that you've always been. You're not even destined for success. If you're successful now, guarantee that if you stay on the same path and trajectory that you're currently on, you're you might be running the risk of not being successful down the road because the, the climate, the external changes and you need to evolve and grow with it. Reinvent yourself every single day. Make yourself into something more and do not ascribe to this idea of destiny that it will just inevitably come to fruition. It is what you make it. It is what you make it. Now, I do believe that we all are all here for a reason, but I don't think that every single one of us steps into that reason that we're here. It's only those who are willing to get into the arena, as Theodore Roosevelt would say, and get our butts in the game and do what we need to do to win and thrive and succeed and reinvent ourselves on a daily basis. Again, guys, number one, be the kind of man that you wish you would have had when you were younger. Number two, be the type of man that other people need you to be and start writing out those virtues and those characteristics. Number three, uh, emulate what other successful people do. If you want to be like Jocko, be like Jocko. If you want to be like me, be like me. You want to be like Andy or Sean or, or Steve or Tim or whoever, be like those guys. Buy their courses, buy their programs, be involved, go to their conferences, subscribe to their emails, listen to their podcast. Number four, do what blank do. Do what runners do. Do what podcasters do. Do what writers do. Do what authors do. Do what photographers do. Do what fathers do. You get it. And number five, is critique yourself often and have a system, a process in place where you can actually document every single day how it went, how it went well, how it didn't go so well, how you can improve and what you're going to do tomorrow. This is the way. And it isn't a one-time activity. You don't get to do this today because you're all hopped up on what I'm sharing with you and then think that tomorrow you're going to be a different man. It might be slightly different, but not enough to notice. But you do this for a week, a month, a year, a decade. Imagine doing this for 10 years. Some of you guys will say, man, Ryan, you're so great at podcasting. Look at all the success you're having. I just looked. We've been doing this for seven years, and I just saw that we have done 925 episodes of the podcast so far. 925 episodes. If we're not somewhat good at this, or at least better than we've been, something has gone horribly, horribly wrong. 900 consecutive episodes without missing a single episode in over seven years. Of course, I'm going to be good at this. Well, Ryan, I just want to be like Cam. He's so, he's so strong and he's a great hunter and he's so successful with hunting and he's a great runner. That guy runs every single day of his life. And it, I, if I had to guess, I don't know for sure. He's been doing it for probably two to three decades. Oh, Jocko. He's so, he's so sure of himself. He's so disciplined. He's so assertive. And, and, and I see him as a leader, right? Cause he shows up every single day and he has been for decades. Gronkowski. Tim Tebow, Tom Brady, Michael Jordan, Kobe Bryant, 
These are guys that we think of as the greatest of all time. Every day they're showing up, critiquing themselves and improving and getting better. That's what it takes. I believe in you. I believe you can do it. It isn't easy. It's very simple. It isn't easy. It's going to require some testicular fortitude and some grit and some resolve, but you can do it. I know you can because I'm in the midst of doing it. And if I can do it, you certainly can. All right, guys, that's all I've got. If you are looking for a resource, because I'm telling you about how to be around other men who you are inspired and impressed by and want to emulate, make sure you check out the Iron Council. We're only open for the rest of the day. We're closing it down at midnight tonight on Friday. So you can check it out, orderaman.com slash Iron Council. Orderaman.com slash Iron Council. All right, guys, go out there, take action, reinvent yourself, and become the man you are meant to be.